Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here on Game Day, and you're watching Game Day Coffee. And I gotta tell you, man, I literally could not sleep last night. I mean, seriously. It just seems like a couple hours ago I did a video. Oh, wait, I did. Because I was out here at 3.30 this morning putting some more chips in for the uh, pork soldiers. Let me actually check the temperatures here with my smart row. One of them's at 168, one's at 165. You want you want to take a peek? Let's take a peek. Still got a few more hours because that last, you know, 20 degrees or so takes a long time. But look at this. Look, look, look right. Can you see that? Can, oh, man. Woo-wee. Got to add a little more to my wash there so that way it'll keep it nice and moisturized and put a little bit more coal in there uh, charcoal hey hang on for a second <laughs> gotta love that charcoal taste to it so Here's an interesting thing. I have been watching the weather forecast all week. All week. Okay? And originally, they said it was going to rain um, Friday into Saturday into Sunday here. Right? Now I'm about 400 miles from New England. They're kind of northwest of me. And the storm that's going to New England goes through here. Now, what they were calling for was rain all day yesterday. They, they changed. Rain all day yesterday into last night, today, and ending around, you know, 12 o'clock, right? You see that right there, right? That's the sun. L look up here. That's blue sky, okay? And as I look at the radar, now I'm not a meteorologist, but as I look at the radar, that storm has cleared out of, of Virginia, D.C., Maryland, and just about out of Pennsylvania, and it's basically New York and New England. And it looks like this thing is going pretty quickly. And I'm betting... Again, I'm betting by 2 o'clock that storm is out of there. You watch, by 2 o'clock, that they're not going to have rain that whole game. Now, here's the other interesting thing. They're calling for a high temperature of 52 degrees. Now, news on the players. Tom Brady's elbow, of course, was listed as questionable. Got everybody's hopes all up. Cowboy fans, oh, Tom Brady's not going to play got Eagle fans out there saying, well, you know, the Cowboys get all lucky because they don't end up playing anybody's starting quarterback. Listen, this is just some trickery by New England. Just like Bill Belichick had somebody over there on top of the star watching the Cowboys. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. So Brady's fine. Also, too, it's a miracle. It's a, um, look, look, you see, look, look, the sun popping through. It's a miracle because now all of a sudden they're saying Muhammad Sanu has made a miraculous recovery over the last 24 hours. Can you believe that? Oh, surprise, surprise. Muhammad Sanu is still doubtful, but might play after all. Hmm. Yeah, so there's that. So, don't believe anything you hear from Bill Belichick. But, they probably have the field, I hope, covered. That it's not a quagmire. And it still goes back to the Dallas Cowboys needing to do. Needing to run the football. Or take advantage of the football. But a little, little known interesting fact. 
that I don't know that a lot of people get. We've been focused on Zeke Elliott has not had that burst the last couple of games, and it's true, okay? It's, it, the offensive line hasn't been blocking as well. He hasn't been having the holes that he usually has and things like that. It's collectively that we've got some issues there. But here's the funny thing. Our team has actually been running the football 10 yards better a game collectively than it did last year. So it hasn't been a matter of the Cowboys haven't been able to run the football. It's been a matter of Zeke has come down, but Tony Pollard has also been part of the equation, and occasionally Austin and occasionally Dak Prescott. And that's what the Dallas Cowboys need to do. Understand that you want to have multiple weapons. You want to have a weapon to do different things. It's just like our military. An A-10 Warhog. Why? That's close support. That's in there to take care of the tanks, okay? It's built to be rugged. It can take the shots, right? You know, they, they, it had the titanium bathtub to protect the pilot. Those things would sometimes come back where parts of the wings and stuff are blown off, but it was made for that heavy-duty, close-in, smash-up tanks battle, right? And that did a different job and say your F-18s, your sports cars, your fighter jets that are made to go through and fight against other planes that are fast, quick hitting, right? You know, they go in, close air support, you know, they got the missiles and things, they can do bomb runs and everything else, zoom in, zoom out, different type job. Then you got your stealth bombers that are quiet, they're dark, they're hidden, and they pop up and they surprise you because you don't know they're coming. Each one has a specific task that does something totally different to get the job done that collectively the military wins. And that's what the Dallas Cowboys have. Oh, let me grab some coal. That's what the Dallas Cowboys have with their military here. Hold on, I gotta grab some more shot. Go. I love my lump cowboy charcoal. So each weapon is designed to do a different thing. Sometimes you've got to get in there close support. You just got to run through and just bomb the hell out of everything. Other times, you just need a quick hit. You got to get downfield fast. And there's where the Dallas Cowboys have that multitude of weapons. Your Zeke Elliott is like that A-10 Warhawk. He can get in there and he can just blow away the tanks. You look at Tony Pollard, he's more like an F-18. Well, no, actually, you might want to say Amari Cooper is more like an F-18. But you understand what I'm saying there. You have different things that you have to use. And I think the problem is sometimes the Cowboys forget that they do have so many options and so many different things that they can do. If you're the enemy, if you're New England, if the Cowboys are doing what Dak does great, which is hit seven or more receivers in a game, you just don't know who is going to be the one that's going to end it for you. And that's what they have to do. They have to be able to run the ball by hook or crook, by committee if they have to. That is the easiest area to exploit. And as they exploit that, that makes it a little easier with the receivers. Now, I will say this, New England has had some really bad quarterbacks that they faced this season. 
And nobody that they faced has had a wide receiver core like the Dallas Cowboys, where you have three guys, three guys across the board that can beat you, along with a Jason Witten. So when they go man-to-man, i got to give the advantage to the Dallas Cowboys. And again, I think the Cowboys get a, get a win here. I'm sure if they don't, I'll be trolled, but you know what? I believe in my Cowboys, and I believe that they're going to be able to do things that other teams can't. And we'll find out if I'm right. At come kickoff, there's no rain. All right. I'm going to be having some wings. Got fresh oil in here. Make sure the gate closed. Four gallons of oil. We'll have some Joe Boo wings. Extra hot today. We'll have some pulled pork. And let me know. Should I make some New England clam chowder? Leave a response in the questions in there. Let me know. Clam chowder too or not? Mark Holmes and well. We're already fired up over here. Watch out though. I'll probably do a test live stream early. Got to make sure everything's working right. And I'll probably troll Philly 500. The Eagles are on at one. As well as the Redskins. I'm Mark Holmes and happy game day.